Welcome to another photography locked down challenge. Now everybody's gonna be saying, don't be negative during lockdown, but I'm gonna say, let's get negative, but in a positive way. This week's challenge is all about negative space. Let's play around with negative space. If you're not sure what negative space is, you're gonna really enjoy this little tutorial. It's a really great way to make your viewer concentrate on something, really concentrate and know precisely what they're looking at. But it also creates a lovely quiet sort of an environment when it's used outdoors, when we can get back out into the world. So this week's competition, as always, closes at midnight on Thursday evening. You can't enter after that. Please do not go to your archives and just dig out negative space pictures. This is about what you can achieve in the next few days. This week's hashtag is on screen. It will stay there throughout, PLD negative. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you've got any questions, please click the little thing popping out to the left up here. That will take you to the website. You can leave me your email address. You won't miss anything because I'll send you an email to let you know when the live judgings are happening, if there are any special guests and all that good stuff. You guys are rocking it. I am loving doing this. It is so impressive the things that you're coming up with. This is about looking and seeing and thinking because cameras don't take pictures. It doesn't matter how much kit you buy, how much money you spend. If you don't understand the four or five controls you need and how to think like a photographer, I'm sorry, you're on a hiding to nothing. I don't care how much money you spend. Right, so negative space, what's that all about? It's about having a small subject in a big space. So look, on the other side of the room here, can you see there's a goat's cheese bag over here? It's a nice colorful bag. Now the obvious way to photograph it would be probably to get up close. Um, let me show you. If I get some video camera going here, here we go, look. Would be sort of, you know, let's get close, let's take a picture of the goat's cheese bag, something like that. But it's not particularly interesting, is it? We can make it a lot more interesting by messing around with space, giving it more space, playing around with this, this black top here. And look, there's a line running through where the black top meets the white wall, and then there's all this white wall up above it. Let's have a go at it. So if I come back here, and look at our colorful goat's cheese bag. Let's see if I can show you with some video. I'm not sure if I can, so bear with me. Here we go. There it is with all the stuff on the other side. Now, if we just zoom in, watch. Look, as soon as I stop there and it's got space around it, it's actually a little bit more noticeable than being in close and tight, particularly when we compose it to one side. But what if we rotate the camera the other way up and give it as much space as we can? Look, look at that. Isn't that a nice quiet sort of a thing? We're utilizing the white wall. The goat's cheese bag looks colorful. Let's take that picture. It is so simple, but negative space is in my opinion, an awesome way of producing pictures. So what can you produce in your home Negative space compositions. It doesn't have to be minimalist like this. It could be a picture, it could, it could be a person, it could be anything you like. That's really cool. And guess whose battery's gone flat? Back in a moment. And there we go, nice full one. Let's have a look at that picture. You see what I mean? It just looks a bit nicer. In fact, I'm gonna go wider, further away, give it more space still because I think it will just look better. It will really focus the viewer's attention on the bag. That's better, isn't it? Now I am a negative space junkie. Let's go in the other room because there's so many ways you can interpret this. Let's just go in the living room where I've got a little shot set up for you ready. Now you can spend as long as you like doing this. I've got about an hour to mess about and I've completely forgotten that I need my phone so I can see what you're looking at. Where is it? I hope it's still connected. Yes, it is. Look, you see, I can see what I'm filming in the phone. That's why I keep running backwards and forwards. So let's just pop you up here. I have to re-angle the camera because I want you to see What's going on on the table? 
Here we go. Do you recognize that fella down there? Do you recognize? There we go. Lobby the Lobster. If you're someone who's already done my ultimate beginner's course and seen a few photos, you will recognize this guy because you'll have met him before. Now, sorry for all the messing about. Let's put that there so I can see what I'm doing. What I like here is we've got a red lobster on a blue table, yeah? We've got nice straight lines against the sort of the shapes. Also, over here, we've got a window. And that means there's light coming towards Lobby's face. It's a much nicer light than if it comes towards his other end. Let's see what we can do. See if we can get a bit of hot lobster action going on. Here we go. Look. Now, my phone is annoyingly in shot. Let's put it over there. Here we go. Look. See, we've just got lobster in blue. And I kind of like that. It's, it's an interesting shape with the light coming in this way from the windows. These are the things you want to think about. But also, does it have to be like that? Now, we could go in, obviously, closer. Uh, I don't think that's particularly interesting. It's much nicer to give Lobby some space. But think about your composition, because what have we got either side of the table? Look, a bit of white carpet, a bit of white carpet, and some scruffy old boots. But if we were to play around with this, maybe twist the camera, look what's happening. Look at those little triangles we're getting into the corners. Could we turn the camera and move things around until we got two little triangles going on either side. That's not bad, is it? Look, you see, it's just another way of doing things. Can we get Lobby right in the corner? This is all little, you see the tiny movements it takes to organize this composition. There we go. You see, you just move the camera, these minute bits. Take that picture quickly. Because then I've got something else I want to show you. Here we go. Now I need to brighten this up a bit. Depth of field, is that a problem? Not really, because this is a pretty flat shot. I want to make sure I've got enough exposure. Here we go. I'm going to mess around. I'm not going to mess with this too much. I'm just going to let... Here we go. I want my triangles about the same size. There we go. Lobster in blue. But it's about this allowing space. You can also use a bit of negative space. Think about light and colors because light and colors are so, so important. I don't know how this is gonna work. Let me just see, I'm gonna try putting you here. Yeah, that's not bad. Now look, the table here, okay? We have got the windows at the other end of the room. Notice I open the doors. I'll tell you why that is in a minute. And then we've got our table here. What's happening from this end? When we look down at the table, look, we've kind of got highlights and reflections, haven't we, going on up here. How could we use that? Well, translucent objects are really great if you backlight them. This is, again, all about seeing, being able to see. I'm not sure where I'm going to be able to put you for this, guys. How about on top of the bread bin? Let's just see. Bear with me. It's always a struggle doing this. That's not bad. Oh, brown, you're getting good at this. So if I'm down here, that's cool. And you can see the windows at that end. Right. What are we going to do? I have prepared a wine glass with some blackcurrant squash in it because despite being a big hairy rough trouser wearing biker, I don't actually drink. We could play around with this. Now, translucent objects with light coming behind them, it looks really good, it looks really nice. Now, where could we go? I'm just thinking we can play around. Let's go at this end of the table. I'm gonna put our wine glass here and let's see if we can come up with a negative space composition that will make it look interesting. 
And don't be afraid to break the rules. That I'm not sure about. Let me see what we can do. Oh, oh. Let's just darken our shot, get our exposure right. There we go. Now, I, quite, I originally didn't think I was going to like this because there is a line going through the back of the glass, look. But I'm beginning to think I do. Now, as we tilt the camera down a bit, putting it at the top instead of the bottom, I rather like it. What about if we zoom that lens out, give it more space? I kind of like that. I know there's the line there, but I, I still kind of like it. You see, that's quite an interesting shot. Let's see if I can take that as a still. Now with this sort of backlight, careful with your exposure, use your histogram. Because the histogram is going to make sure you've got all the tones in there. You'd want to burn out the highlights and the histogram will help. I want to go a little darker, change my aperture, speed up my shutter speed. Sorry, slow down my shutter speed. There we go. It's about right. What am I running? 125th per second, f6.4 at um, 320 ISO. Let's get our composition. Focus on the glass. Boom. I rather like that. I do rather like that. It's a very simple one. Now the line may not be to your taste and I'm not so sure it is mine. So let's try something else. Let's bring it this way. Look, there's another line here. Play with these things, guys. Play with these things. There is no right or wrong. There is only what you like. Could I do this without a line at all? but still have the glass small in the frame. I could, and I think that looks pretty cool too. But then again, I like this line here. I want to see what it looks like. Experiment. Let's come back out. Let's lose the line at the top. I have a line at the bottom. I like disrupting the symmetry. I like messing things up, having something unexpected. I kind of like that line. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me, but there we go, I kind of like it. Let's try something else. Let's just pull this back here. Now actually I'm going to put it here. Because right in the bottom of this glass, there is, if I can show you, this little tiny pink, Get you in focus, here we go. Oh, I took a picture on it, it's a cute video. Look at this little, look at this little bad boy here. Look at this little bit here. Look, that little shape. Let's look how the light is coming through behind. Look at the lovely textures. And look what's happening when it's hitting that shiny little piece of table there. Look, I think that's quite interesting. Now what would happen if we could give that, just that negative space? just that bit and just play with that little piece and some reflection. This is why I opened the doors because the doors were putting a crisscross on the table. You're seeing the edges of the doors reflected down here and here. Look at everything. Always look at everything. Right, where's the best place to do this? I think if I move back and zoom in, I'm not in the right place. This isn't quite... I think I need to put it on this bit of table here. Let's see what happens here. We've still got the light. That's better. That's better. Let's... A bit more negative space. Backing it away. And take the shot. You can play around with this forever. With all sorts of things. It is just the most marvellous. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good? Anything works. Shapes. I'm going to do one last quick demo because I really like this stuff. How about a teapot? Look, we've got a square shaped teapot. How about we put it here? We're using the light from the window. How could we play with it? These are all the questions that you guys need to ask yourselves. Now, if you're someone who's struggling and thinking, I can't produce pictures like that, well, 
There was a time when I couldn't either. This is all about learning. We all have to start somewhere. Look, isn't that nice? And as we zoom out, that's too far. Let's come in, but look at that great shape just in the corner. Doesn't that look cool? We could put it wherever you want. You could move it into the middle. It would probably still work. These are all things for you to experiment with. And I quite like that, having it pointing diagonally, corner to corner. Don't ever stop playing. Don't ever stop experimenting. If you're confused by what I'm talking about, composition being little movements of arms and legs and hands and feet, how to do exposures, then please go check out my Ultimate Beginner's course. I like that. Go and check it out. Go and see, because this is where you're gonna learn how to control your camera. And there's only a handful of controls on a camera that you need. That shot was quite dark and moody and I like it, but what if you wanted your shot to be a little brighter and happier? How would you do that? This is all things you do with exposure. There isn't necessarily a right exposure. There's just the exposure that gives you what you want, a darker moody shot or a slightly brighter, lighter one. So there you go, guys. Go play around negative space. That is your challenge for this week. See what you can come up with. Don't upload things from your archive. This week's hashtag has been on screen, PLD negative. It must accompany your pictures when you upload them to the Facebook group. Take care. I'll be seeing you live when uh, we do the judging. All the best. Have fun and be safe.